Okay, this is a little bit more discussion about project question two, where you've been asked to build your personal polynomial. So make sure you've checked out the two YouTube videos before this one. This is just a little follow up. So as you think about building your own personal polynomial, it's probably helpful to have um, a little table like the one I just wrote below where I'm corresponding a to one, b to two, c to three, etc because it turns out that's a big part of what this process is. So I'm just going to choose a word um, like math. I don't want to actually do a name, as some of you may have already discovered. I'm not super helpful with your exact name, but I think if we talk about some of the ideas you'll use, you'll feel really confident that you can check your answer for this question. So if I was building the personal polynomial for the word math, I would need four things to happen, basically for each of the four letters. The first thing is, is for my personal polynomial, when I plug in 1, because m is the first letter of this word, I need to get back the number that m corresponds to in the alphabet. So m corresponds to the 13th letter of the alphabet, so the function evaluated at 1 needs to equal 13 for this word. Similarly, if I plug in the second letter, of the word math, I should get back 1 because A corresponds to the first letter in the alphabet. Then if I plug in 3, I should be getting back whatever T corresponds to in terms of number. So T we can see is the 20th letter of the alphabet. So F of 3 will equal to 20. So last but not least, you can tell it looks like when we plug in um, 4 for the fourth letter of the word math, we should get back 8 because H is the eighth letter of the alphabet. So F of 4 will equal to 8. Cool. So I would highly recommend that you start your personal polynomial in a similar way. These are the four points that I have to make sure my polynomial passes through. I'm going to switch over to Desmos now, and all I'm going to do on Desmos is plot these four points we just talked about. So just for clarity, um, when we say f of 1 equals 13, that means when x is 1, y is 13. So my polynomial needs to pass through the point 1, 13. Similarly, when f of 2 equals 1, that means if you plug in 2 for x, you should get back 1 for y f of 3 equaling 20 means when you plug in 3 for x, you get back 20 for y. f of 4 equaling 8 means plug in 4 for x, and you get back 8 for y. So I'm going to plot those four ordered pairs. Um, if you want to jot them down, if you're following along, you sure can. And I'm going to plot them in Desmos, and then just talk about what the end result that we desire is going to be. So let's switch over to Desmos here. So I'll plot those points so they were 1, 13. And in Desmos, it's nice you have the option to label. So I'm just going to remind myself that the 1, 13 is for the letter M. Um, for my next point, it'll be when X is 2, Y is 1. That's for the letter A. And then our third point, when X is 3, we said Y needs to be 20. That takes care of the T. And last but not least, when x is 4, y is 8, that corresponds to the letter h. All right, so let me go ahead and um, close that for just a second so you can see those points. And let me adjust the scale. So basically, this is four letters, so I know I'm only going to need to be between 1 and 4 for x, so I'll give a little bit of space on each side. And then we're dealing with letters of the alphabet, so we know we won't go higher than 26. I don't have a Z in this one, so I won't even hit 26. So you can see that those letters are just spaced out. And our job is to build a polynomial that passes through those four points. And in order to build that polynomial, we're going to use a little bit of our knowledge of factors. And we'll kind of see what it looks like. So at the end of the video, I'll punch in the final result we get so you can see that it will pass through those four points. But just so that we're all clear, that is the desired goal for this process. Okay, so now back to this. How do we go about doing that? Well, 
Um, basically, you want to think about how many letters your word is. So we're again doing the word math. So that has four letters. So I'm going to take four terms in my polynomial. So I'm going to let my polynomial be four terms long. And what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm just going to put a little blank for each of the terms with an addition between them, similar to what we saw in the video, just so that we know we'll have one term to get each letter right. So to get the M in the word math, I know that when I plug in an X value of 1, the function has to output that 13 that we talked about. Um, when I plug in an X value of 2, I need to get back that output of 1. When we plug in 3, that was for T, so we get the output of 20. When we plug in 4, that goes with 8, because H again was the 8th letter. So I'm kind of thinking about it as making each term generate one of those special points. This is where our knowledge of factors comes in a little bit. So let me just go ahead and place the desired coefficients at the beginning of each term. 13, 1, 20, oops, I'm combining there, sorry, 20 and 8. And then when x is 1, I somehow want to get rid of my second, third, and fourth terms. Well, turns out that just uses our understanding of zeros, right? So if I don't want this second term to show up when x is 1, make x minus 1 a factor of that term, and it will disappear when x is 1. The same needs to be true of my third and fourth terms. So I'm giving the x minus 1 factor to my second, third, and fourth terms so that when I plug in 1, those terms go away and I have my chance to get 13 as the output. I can apply almost identical logic to the second, third, and fourth terms respectively. So when x is 2, I want to get rid of my first, third, and fourth terms. So I place a factor of x minus 2 in my first, third, and fourth terms, and that means those terms will zero out when x is 2. When x is 3, I need to get rid of my first, second, and fourth terms. So I just put a factor of x minus 3, and that seals the deal there. Plug in 3, and x minus 3 becomes 0. 0 times anything is 0. So hopefully you guessed it for the fourth term. Just make the other terms have a factor of x minus 4, and those terms will zero out. Cool. So at this point, I think we're, we're well on our way to achieving the goal of when we plug in 1, we want to get back 13. When we plug in 2, we want to get back 1. When we plug in 3, we get back 20. We want to get back 20. When we plug in 4, we want to get back 8. But let's see how close we are to achieving our goal. Let's just say, for example, that we plugged in 1. So let's focus on this first goal of plugging in 1 and getting an output of 13. First, just to make sure this point is very much um, drilled home, when I plug in 1 in the second, third, and fourth terms, would you agree we get a factor that simplifies to 0, and 0 times anything else is 0? So for plugging in x equals 1, thankfully, these second, third, and fourth terms go away as desired, right? So that's good. Um, but we do still need to plug 1 into the entire first term, and it looks like we might be getting back a little bit more than 13. So we'll figure out a way to deal with that. Let me, for the sake of our, our next terms, get rid of those squiggles briefly. And again, let's just show what plugging in 1 would look like. So if we plugged in 1 to this first term for all the x's, I end up getting a little different than 13. So it looks like I have 13 times negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3. Well, the greatest trick in the book in terms of math is undo what you don't want, right? So since we end up timesing by a negative 1, a negative 2, and a negative 3, let's just fix that by dividing by negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Then we'll be good to go. So now if you were to plug in x equals 1 to this whole first term, I'll leave it to you to verify, but we will in fact get 13 back now. So I ended up just dividing by what those 
unnecessary factors turned out to be. Okay, cool. Let's see if we can show our work in a similar way for the second term. So I'll go ahead and um, think about now plugging in x equals 2. I'm going to take away this scratch work for a moment. So when we plug in x equals 2, let me just verify with all of you that when I plug in um, x equals 2, my first term, my third term, and my fourth term zero out because they've got a factor of x minus 2. So if x is 2, 2 minus 2 makes those terms go away. So I don't need to worry about the first, third, or fourth. And that was intentionally how we built our polynomial. So instead, we just got to worry about the second term. So let's grab this second term. I'll move it up top for plugging in. And I'm going to plug in 2 for all the x's that I see. And then we'll just talk about what extra factors we just get when we plug 2 in. So I end up with a factor of 1, negative 1, and negative 2. The desired output when x is 2 is 1. So let's just divide by these other factors. Just for the sake of pattern, I'll divide by 1, even though it's unnecessary. I need to divide by negative 1 and negative 2. So I'm just literally dividing by the 3 values of those factors when I plug x equals 2 in. How's that pattern seeming to you guys? Pretty decent in terms of figuring out your next steps? Let's do it for our third and fourth terms. And maybe just to challenge us a little bit, I'm going to try doing it out loud. When we plug in 3 for x in our third term, 3 minus 1 gives me a factor of 2. 3 minus 2 gives me a factor of 1. 3 minus 4 gives me a factor of negative 1. So I would need to divide by those same three factors. And let me just clean up a little bit. And then let's do the same technique for our fourth term. So for our fourth term, now we're plugging in 4 for x. So I would get... Um, 4 minus 1, which is 3. I would get 4 minus 2, which is 2. And I would get 4 minus 3, which is just 1. So I'll make sure to divide by those same three factors. So what we have on the screen actually is our polynomial. I know it looks a tad bit messy. That's OK. Um, at this point, what I'm going to do just to make it feel a little bit more clear is take away these ordered pairs. And if you insert this nice big equation into Desmos, it will pass through those four points that we had listed. So uh, if you wanted to clean up just a little bit, you could. All that I would probably do if you asked me to clean it up would be to say, for example, in my first term, I really have 13 divided by, let's see, negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. And then it's still times by those three x terms. For my second term, I could write it as 1 divided by 2. So I could say 1 half times the x terms. For my third term, let's see, I've got 20 being divided by 2 times 1 times negative 1. So that's 20 divided by negative 2, which is actually a negative 10 times its x terms. And then for my last term, I've got 8 divided by 6. So I could reduce that down to 4 thirds. So if you want to do a little bit of reducing, especially for typing into decimals, that's pretty handy. Um, so now at this point, I would just type that whole thing in. And I think I have this already typed and ready to go so that I don't have to use your guys' time here. So let me switch back over to Desmos and show you that if we punch that in, it gives us the desired result. So this was earlier where I had plotted those four points, but I think I have my graph saved. Here it is. So same four ordered pairs. I went ahead and took the time of punching in that equation. And then you can see now that it passes perfectly through the four points that we needed it to. And I just showed another little check down here where I plugged in f of 1 and got 13. 
f of 2 gave me 1, f of 3 checked out at 20, and f of 4 checked out at 8. So this is the graph of the personal polynomial for the word math. And let me swipe back to that equation. This would be the desired equation if your name was math. So hopefully that helps. I hope you have fun with the project.